to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Smelling my skin. Why? <laughs> Why are you I'm smelling not. your skin? It doesn't matter. That's not what we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it is. Jabes. People need to know before we get into the heavy stuff. I don't know. What you're doing. Just, what are you doing? Just smelling my skin. Oh, God. Just smelling your smelling skin. Smelling my skin. On the road again. Oh, boy. Can't wait to get on the Road, Road again. again. Yep. Now listen. Yep, 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 yep. I found you something since we're traveling so much. Yeah. So much. I guess that's like our life now, right? This so. was this was an accident. We this was an unplanned trip. Obviously. Um, well, we're gonna be a little cagey about it, and we'll we'll reveal yes. it later. But anyways, I found this thing called the knee defender. Ah, what's that? Have you heard of this? No, I have not. Okay, so it's this these two clamps. It's called the knee defender. It's these two clamps that you put like on the tray table. Okay. So that the person in front of you, it locks it in place so that the person in front of you cannot. On a plane. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. For very tall oh, people. Yeah. It also comes with a note, huh. a like pre-made little note that you're supposed to give to the person in front of you. And it lets them know okay. very nicely that you're an asshole. Really? And they're going to need to deal with it. <laughs> I'm going to pop that up. What site is that? It's called Knee Defender. Knee, ah, Knee Defender. Knee is that Defender. A, is that a .com or a .org, you think? Um, it looks like it's a .com, but it's on like gadgetduck.com. Oh, but anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. This knee is, Defender. Uh, are we doing this now? What? Are you getting it? I think I might have to order this. So I tried to order it. It wasn't going to come in time for this crazy trip that we're about to take. But I think in general, if anyone can do it. So, so what I've heard from it is that people are very. Just ordered. So. Blamo. That, I mean, that's how fast you can order the things. Biggest, PayPal. Wise. Gone. Um, done. Out. Complaint that people have is they're very nervous. They end up just not giving the card. Mm. Right. And then you just the person thinks that their shit is broken. Right. Sure. Because. I, I think there's very few people that would want to be that confrontational, right? Besides you. you I don't would, have a problem with it. But you don't have a problem with it. Would you give the card or not give the card, though? Not give the card. Not give the card. Nope. And wouldn't, I think that's, give the card. that's been the consensus of everyone that's used it is, yes, it's, it's cool. We do use it. It works. Most of these people are 6'2 and, and taller. Yeah. Um, and it's, to them, it's been great. But. The I, I, sh I, the I, just, shame. I just ordered it right now on the, the shame. thing. I don't have the fucking shame of it. No, um, you don't. I, I don't at all. Because mm -hmm. uh, the problem is with this many last minute flights for interviews, you can't sit first, right? You just, it might not be available or whatever. We just, or if you're traveling that much, you just, we well, don't we've go talked first about this. Class well, here's the thing we've talked about this on a show before of the co coach has, has gone. Way up, where it's like people don't people don't want to fly in first anymore um, because they don't give you the, like all the shit. They used yeah. to give you like meals and yeah, TVs and um, so people aren't I doing don't it. I take advantage of all the stuff that first right. gives and, and, you. So and they're it's lowering. Like, what am I doing? They're lowering the prices of first, yeah. and they're giving you free bags. So it's just like, all right, well, we're only like eighty bucks off of what I would have paid in coach with ninety bags and all that other shit. Yeah, so we have to travel with like sixty bags for. Um, sound equipment and everything else mm. for, for all of this shit. Uh, tonight's flight, that was super last minute. We will probably be in 29B. The toilet, and, the toilet yeah, which yeah. is fine, but if you have your knee defender. Correct. Problem is. You get that extra three inches. Didn't have that on the last. Uh, didn't have it on. You won't have it flight. on this one. No, but I will have it after that. And you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you're you. And, I, and I will use it and I will not give them a card and say, <laughs> I don't know, man, your fucking seat's probably broken. So. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry about it, cheese. Right? Just watching them like. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry about it, it, cheese. And they're just like. Uh, uh, uh. I think I, I think a knee defender has been used on me before, because I've been like, dude, this is not going back. Right. Or it, it could it just be could broken. Just been a tall person. Because I do it too. Where so, you just like push your knees up against if, it. If I get in before them, 
I go knees hard against the seat, and then they can't fucking move it. Oh. If I get a sitting coach, sorry. Sorry, dude. Right. Six, three and a half. If you have to suffer, all we all suffer, right? I'm a large man. No, not that. It's just like, like yeah. hey, man, that extra two inches anyway is like, because I'm courteous to other people. I don't fucking put my seat back mm-hmm. ever, ever. If I'm in coach, I don't put it back because I don't want to fuck up somebody else's shit. Two inches isn't important enough for me that I want to ruin somebody else's three or four hours on a flight. Right. It's not. So I, I'm reverse courteous of it, of like, hey, man, I realize the struggle here. You know, right. seats are getting smaller in coach. They're trying to jam more in. Um, I think I got us exit rows this time. Yeah, look at you. Did you really? Yeah. All right. Fuck yeah. Way to go, James. You're welcome. Proud of you. That is unexpected. I mean, you were learning. We paid a little bit extra. You were for growing. It, but eh, whatever. are you going to be able to as long assist, as we got it. though? In the event. Yeah, of ripping the door off. If I would have been left on one of those flights that was on the runway for seven or eight hours at LaGuardia. Oh, blammo. I would have. Open, out. Because it's like a $500 fine. I would have fucking done it. Jumped to your. Yep. Just jumped, had the whole thing deflate or inflate and then. Slid down. (laughs) Slid down and just said, hey, (laughs) find me, dude. Give me that 500 fine. Find me, bro. Move on with my life because (laughs) I am not doing it. Find me. You remember what happened in Atlanta when we got stuck on the tarmac when you were pregnant? Yeah, uh, that when all the electricity was went out. There was this, that my magical blackout. Nightmare. Yeah. Um, I said, "Fuck it, let's just walk off the tarmac." And they were like, "No, you can't do that." And I was like, "Better send a bus, or I'm walking off the fucking tarmac." Right. Because I don't really give a shit about your rules. Sure. Because um, it was find com- me, bro. Com- yeah, find me. It's complete chaos. Out yeah. there. I was like, no. Oh, it really was chaos. And then. I'll walk off the fucking tarmac. I don't give a shit. My personal nightmare where we had to like run through the subway thing. And oh, like yeah. be running from the guard. Yep. Like, no. Yeah. And you and can't. And you were like, just go. Yeah. Just go. I'm going to need you to fucking follow her to, to the T where I am a rule breaker. No, I just. When I get away with something, it needs to be completely gotten away with. It can't be. Like, and I don't mind doing that. If I get away with it, like yeah. hiding something somewhere, getting away with whatever. Sure. But if there is someone that I need to like confront yeah. to get away with something, yeah. then that's You're the no-go. You're that's out of there. That's the no-go. Sure, sure, sure. Speaking of confrontation, Jabes, um, wearing your shirt. Wearing all the mom's shirt today. Thank you. Uh, read it. Read it for the audience, please. Uh, Masonboro Forest for Neighborhood School. There it is. Uh, we talked about this on the show. I was going to give my big speech, my big uh, rally cry. Oh, it was going to be. Fi- it was going to be my field of we, dreams moment. We, we flew- nominated you. Yes. We all gave you what to say. We were so excited that we were going to have a. A nice time at the auditorium. A public chance speaking. To, yeah, one of those town halls. Very give our voices. field of dreams. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what, that's what I felt like. Very Terrence man. Um, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there it is. Look at you pulling out the Field of Dreams But you references. know what I mean? Like yes. that when they all went to the. And I, I thought I thought that was going to be the big yes. deal of it, you know? The forum. Yeah, the big stink. The things you always see where the parents are shouting out. And oh, we yeah. We won't stand for this. Correct. None of that. No. Everyone uh, was very subdued and then they just fucking no, they, they shut were, us up. So here's the thing. They were not subdued. And I talked about this on Drinking Bros yesterday. I'll talk about it today on here. The moms were not subdued right. whatsoever. Like you could feel the angst in the room. And then when that motherfucker, Matthew Cropper from uh, Cropper G.I.S. Mm-hmm. Um, came on stage and was like, you know, we're not going to talk in a public forum. We stopped doing that about 10 years ago because we found that it just didn't work. Mm. Did it not? Did it not? Because or it, did it work seems well? like it probably worked too well. And now you want to. Uh, settle the shut us up. The the so settle down to the confrontation for yeah. you. So you want to separate. So it, from the very beginning, I'm sure you talked about it on the drinking bros. But as soon as we sat down, so everyone's heated. We have our petitions. We have our shirts. We're ready. We're looking for the microphone. Where are we speaking? Okay. And from the second that we sat down, they were deploying tactics to diffuse everyone the whole situation so from our power stupid powerpoint like we're five years old yeah guiding principles 
yeah. the, gri- the guiding principles that we're going off. And guys, listen, we're being very transparent, but you aren't being transparent. No. Because the people that are really making the decisions are at home hiding while the people that they paid to take the shit are in front of us. Yes. Then after that, they disperse everybody into little groups by maps. Yeah. So from the second we sat down, they were doing all, and you could see it happening. If you're not an idiot, you can literally see them just using every thing bullshit that they tactic bullshit in tactic the, in the book to get you to get you to calm down, shut up and, and just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Yeah. Hey, we're making our decisions and that's fucking great. And uh, you guys can live with it. Totally transparent, guys. We're up. To, go to the survey. Yeah. Go to the survey. So what he tried they to do when we us, first yeah, walked yeah, try up. Yeah, send us to a survey. So we were like just talking to him, showing the map. I was just showing him like what makes sense for this school to go here and us to go there and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, I invite you guys to go online and go to the survey. And he quickly realized that that was not going to work. No, I got right in front of that motherfucker's anyone. face. And, and I, I said, said, is that what you're going to? I said, are you just going to answer everything with survey or are we going to actually have a conversation? No. Well, you know, well, blah, blah. So. Yeah. Uh, so I got in his face and I said, hey, man, here's the fucking sitch. Uh, we're, got, we're actually going to have a conversation about this. We're going to talk about this. And I'm going to address the problems of what this is. Because you hired somebody from outside of our state to redistrict schools in a tiny town. Well, it town. was him that they hired. Yeah, so I know. he has no... Okay, okay. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah. Because, you know, when they came in and introduced him, it was the head of the school board. Yeah. Uh, this fucking guy, uh, David Hortman. He was fairly nice, but he's a little fucking Weasley weak Yeah, he was just trying to get us shit. out of there so he was and nice on, our, on enough, our way. But he was also lying and he was also being... You know, it's just shady. Like, why, why can't you, why can't you just sit there and let us talk? And they, so they didn't let any of the moms talk and it was pure chaos at the end. And I said, you know what, man, uh, I got about 6.1 million listeners on drinking bros, 1.8 on here. And I was like, you can shut these moms up tonight, but you're not going to shut this down. So we're going to fucking rage against you. And you'll, you'll find out what it's like. And he kind of gave me like a smirk of like, oh, mm-hmm. really? Okay. People Go don't, to the survey. People I went to don't the understand, survey. by the way, the power of a, a podcast and what it is. They think if you're not on the radio, like a local station, it's like, look, motherfucker, if I was on a local station, I'd be lucky to get 30,000 listeners, right? Now we're close to 8 million. And today uh, he felt the first 6.1 million call him. Um, Matthew Cropper, GIS, uh, he's already deleted his Facebook page, and it is not even new. Oh, God. Um, next is the Instagrams. We're working on that. Um, this, it, what do you reckon? Does this work, or does this just oh, I, get I, I, our... Look, our, we, we moved to a specific what neighborhood. What did we tell? What we did... moved to a specific neighborhood that was close to an elementary school and a middle school. It's 1.6 miles out of the back. You take a left, elementary mm-hmm. school. 1.8, take a right out of the back. That's the middle school. You, there's nowhere else for us to go. Where did, what did we tell the listeners to say? Just call him? Call him. And I said, free, I, look, I said, free Mason Bro Forest is what I said. Um, okay. And uh, I've gotten, fuck, hundreds of messages already saying, I think this guy has blocked me already. Like, this is getting crazy. I got one message that was like, I'm 69% sure that he disconnected his phone. <laughs> I like the 69% as well Because it's a high number But it's a great number It's a great number And uh, we appreciate that um, So uh, today let's Talk about the others let's Talk about the others on this board Okay um, Because this is If he's gonna Because uh, this is my guess now at this point right? You hire an outside party to come into A town they've never, never been to Never lived in, and and they and he said it. That David Hortman guy said it, you know. Mm-hmm. And he said, "Oh, this guy's never even been here, never even seen the city." Mm-hmm. That way, the the opinion is totally unbiased. And I was like, "No, but it's, it's uninformed and uneducated." Uninfor- yeah, exactly. So don't fucking so pass the buck. So when I was buck. saying to him like certain things about where there's a light for a certain uh, subdivision to go to the school that they're sending us, it would be easier for them to go than it would for us to go. He didn't know what I was talking about. Didn't he doesn't know anything? Because he's not from here. So yeah. when I say this person can go at the light, this whole group, sixty-five kids, can do that. 
Yeah. He was just like, uh, uh, I don't I, know. I don't, I'm going to have to look know into what that. But everyone do. on the board knows that. It's just a, he's a talking head with a fucking cheap presentation. And that's all it was is a, a diversion tactic of what the real issue is. All of these people are running for re-election next year. Mm -hmm. This redistricting is happening and they don't want to get voted out of their positions. And what I said on Drinking Bros, I'm going to say it today. If this goes down and you redistrict a school that is, again, 1.6 and 1.8 miles from my house, from where I fucking live, mm -hmm. there's nowhere else like, but to hike up somewhere else. Well, right? It'll take us a half an hour to get to the other school. Yeah. But, and, and for both ways, that's going to add an hour, an extra hour to, to my day and, and your day. We shoot this and show. And more importantly, the kids' day the kids. on the bus. The kids. So like when they're taking the bus home. I don't want him on there for fucking half an hour. At a, at, a, at a road where there's no traffic lights or any of that stuff. And here's the thing. It's, it's a small town. Again, 250,000 people live, live in this town. There wasn't any new schools built, right? Or it's not like it was a busing situation of like, hey, man, we're trying to, you know, blend in other communities and all that other shit. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It's not that either. Um, they're just kind of mixing around kids. Uh, and, it, and it all seems very fucking suspect to me. Mm -hmm. um, David has got two kids, he said. Okay. So David is? Uh, Hortman. He was the guy we talked to. Okay. That told um, us. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he's got two kids. I guarantee fucking to you. He got exactly the school district that is close enough to his house mm. uh, that, that where his kids will go will be right by his fucking Absolutely. house. Um, will they, though, is the question. Because if this goes down, and I, and I said this on Drinker Bros, and I mean this, I will fucking run against you next year on, for the Board of Education and take your goddamn job. So if this is your second income or whatever it is to you, um, it's going to be mine. And I'm going to take this away from you. Because you fucking cocksuckers gave us no option, no nothing. And to pull kids away from schools that they're already in from, again, 1.6 miles away. Christ, I could see if we were living in the big city, you know, mm. if we were in Atlanta or shit. Because this happened to me in Atlanta. Um, and I told the audience this. I, I got redistricted when I was in fourth grade. Uh, it was far. I ended up on a fucking bus uh, forever. And I get split up from all my friends. Mm -hmm. So all the friends that I had from, you know, kindergarten through fourth we're gone, and the weird thing is, is uh, I didn't get to see them until high school, and it was it was like lost. It was like the plane showing back up on Lost, where you're like, oh, yeah. fuck, are we back on the island, or because this this is real weird. Like everybody grew up, right. um, and it was a strange transition uh, for for me. Like I was just like, ah, oh, shit, I got to remake friends with kids that I used to know, but everybody's got now they're new friends, and you're kind of like, where do I fit in, right? When you go back to high school, and that's. That's what happened to me. So um, if this happens, and more importantly, if they don't let you guys speak mm -hmm. in a public forum. That's the thing with us is we're not going to die if it doesn't happen. But we just wanted to be able to, the opportunity to fight um, as it should be, right? To just fight yeah. in the democracy the way that we want to be able to like showing you know they always say like show up local governments the most important thing show up to your town yeah. hall show up yeah. to your committee meetings well we're showing up yep to everyone at this point and you're shutting and we're all just wanting down. to talk we just want one of them even if we all fucking yell at you you're gonna have to take it that's your job that's, that's, your, that's your job and job. that's what you signed up for so if you're gonna do something like this you know, yeah. that's just how it goes. I mean, so uh, that's the only thing is like, yeah, are we going to die? No. Is it a horrible school? No. No. I, it's and just, I, you know, and it's I just said we that need to be able to have a voice for even if it's just one night and even if you don't fucking even do anything about it. And it's just that's it's, all we need. Though. It's not the safest route for the children because look, the, the school that they are trying to redistrict us to um, isn't bad at all. And the teachers are nice and all that other shit. No, it's great, but, but it's just the safety of the kids trying to get there and then the parents and traffic and what that's going to create for the town. This is what happens when you have a guy come in and, and who doesn't know anything about the fucking traffic patterns or about the town and all that other shit. Um, but uh, if he disconnected his phone, uh, I, know he dis I know he deleted his Facebook. Uh, he's still up on Instagram. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a personal message on there. Um, sure. See what happens. I have a sure. feeling that's going to be... Uh, Private as well coming up. Uh, and again, again, Matthew, thanks for that fucking smirk, brother. Uh, you encouraged P. 
people to call. He did say, he I, did encourage. say I encourage. I encourage it. I, I encourage said, great. It. I said, do you and then want he, us wa- to call he walked you? away with a little smirk, and I was mm-hmm. like, and he said, this fucker. Yeah. Cool, I'm not man. Doing shit. So we, we called. Um, you've deleted your phone number. We'll find others. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm completely fine with it. But to, because uh, th- there's a woman named Lisa Estep. She's on there. David Hortman. Stephanie Adams. Nelson Beaulieu. That guy. Remember that, mm. that guy? Baldy. Yeah. Uh, Judy Justice. Uh, Jeanette Nichols, and then uh, Bill Rivenbark. Uh, and there's an email here for all of the Board of Education members, and that is uh, board members email at nhcs.net. The hilarious thing about this on their website is they are only offering you a fax number. Oh, yes. A fucking fax number. But feel free. But feel free. You know what was weird? Contact us. Yesterday... They had a number on there oh. that is now missing. There is only a fax number. Oh, no. So if you want to fax them something, yeah, let's say you have a fax machine at work. Sure. You want to fax them. Free Mason Burl Any, Forest. Yeah. Eh, just write it down. Fax them at 910-254-4350. Imagine if they got a bunch of faxes. Keep... Oh, my God. Oh. It'd be great. 910-254-4350 is the fax number. Um, and then there's another meeting like on October 1st, which, you know, it's a town meeting. So everybody from the town is allowed to be there. Obviously, I'll be there. Um, Obviously. Can't wait to see them. All of them. Well, October 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we look whether they like it or not. We're coming for you. And the speech is happening. So, yeah, it's either going to happen with or without. A forum. Yep. But it's happening. Your call. You're going to have to way. kick me out. Either way. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that all shakes out. But, uh, you know, in case uh, Matthew Cropper p- plugs back into that number, maybe he turned it off for the day, right? Maybe just for the day. He thought, let me just. Let me just turn this off for the cool day. Just cool off a little cooling off period. You can, uh, you can hit him back uh, via phone at 614. Four five one one two four two. He if encouraged he it. it back on. He encouraged. He encouraged it. it. So if he turns it back on, it's six one four four five one one two four two. That is Matthew Cropper at GIS, and uh, give him a little jangle. Yeah. Say what's up, mm-hmm. Freemasonboro Forest. You fucking cock. So the meeting did not go as planned. I know we've been talking about this for weeks. Flew back uh, from the the cruise super early. Uh, after the Drinking Bros cruise, yeah. which was... I was still on the boat in the meeting. You were still on the boat, and these the, you guys had T-shirts made and everything else, and it's like, man, you moms work hard as, as, as hell uh, across the board, and uh, you all deserve to be heard from whatever neighborhood you're in. And um, let's face it, I, most of us dads have to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, you work. Mm-hmm. You do the show in the morning. Um, take, I, I usually take our kids to school. Um, then you prep for the show. I come in afterwards. We do the show. You go home, and then I come home at you know six thirty at night or whatever. Like adding more time to your day for all of this shit, it's crazy. Um, yeah. Again, for schools that are one point six miles away, like I, I could see if we were splitting hairs over like ten miles, twenty miles, something like that. Like fuck you, dude. Just move everybody north. That's it. all. That's it. Um, they, they even put people south of us at, the, at our school. And it's just like, man, I'm going to have to drive past this school to get to the fucking new one. Like, wh- in what world is that happening? So, uh, it, we're, it's, it, the reckoning is coming. Mm-mm. I can promise you that. Because, mm-hmm. again, I'll run for your, I'll, I'll just run for your job. I will run for your fucking jobs uh, next year at the election. The one that you tried to dodge this year by h- hiring somebody outside of the state. I will run for your fucking jobs. Um, all right, rant over. Uh, let's get to the sponsor, shall we, James? Ooh, okay. Yeah. We're talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. That's a mattress. Now, I bet you none of those motherfuckers on the school board sleep on this mattress. You know? They'd have nope. a better attitude with life if yeah. they did. Uh, ghost bed is the finest sleep you'll ever have in the land. The ghost pillows will make you wake up like an angel. Um but, uh, yeah, fucking maybe we should get the goddamn Board of Education some beds. There you go. There we go. If you guys do the right thing. Maybe maybe, we'll maybe their thinking would have been better maybe on this whole entire a process. that's way to approach it. That's what happens when you don't we'll sleep well. We'll give you new beds. Give you new beds from ghostbed.com 
forward slash drinking bros. If you're military or first responder, bottom of the page, you'll see a nice, nice little tab that you can get an extra 15% off. It's amazing. Uh, as always, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They've got a page to go program. 36 months, no interest. No one on the internet is doing that. Jabes. Best in the business at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we get strikeforceenergy.com. Boom, 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 shabloinkers. Mm. Strike force. I'm having some now. Cruising, Sorry. cruising. Uh, having some now. I want to apologize. I don't have the new uh, boxes up yet. They sent me some new boxes. Oh. Dude, they keep. Oh, yes. They, exactly. They're exploding. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I can just. Yeah. I'm mean, going to be honest. They're in like, what? I think 1,400 7-Elevens now. Um, and everybody's just like, dude, they're in like stores and all that shit. I was like, look, man, we've been with these guys for years to this point. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the best energy drink you can possibly get for real. If you don't want to lug around, you know, a bunch of shit, uh, like four amazing flavors, grape, original lemon and orange, uh, 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle that rests on your bar top or countertop. And you can just boom, boom, pop a couple squirts in and go. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Use promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Last but not least, Jabes, this is what they came for. Especially Gordon Wagner. Oh, is he yeah. back? He's always He's never left. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He's okay. never left. Well, you write it has not been really the Instagram. Oh, oh, not going? I don't yeah, know who runs that. I, don't I know, know who runs me that, neither, though. but anyway. Yeah. It's got to be tough that we do so many shows. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So. Um, but what are we talking about? Talking about straightrazors.com. Oh, that's a clean cut smooth. Oh, you right, kids? Ah, mm. there it is. There it is, James. There it is. Shaving products for dudes and, and uh, ladies of all ages. Would you ever, would you ever just, uh, shave your legs with a straight razor? It's probably be too much, right? It's too much. Yeah, I figured. Too much. It's too too scary. Too for many. dudes. Yeah, it's for dudes. I would use maybe the safety razor, mm. but gosh, there is nothing like a new super yeah, they got a nice safety sharp razor. razor. Um, they got a nice safety like razor. You. What do you What do you got up there, Jamie? Uh, they want to send an email directly to the person's fax machine. No way. So our our producer Jamie just uh, popped in and said, "Hey, if you want to send emails f- via fax." You can just go to faxzero.com and then just email to, to, for a free fax. That's fucking awesome. I'll hold that up one more time. Faxzero.com. Email to fax for free. Zero, Z-E-R-O. You're spelling it out. So yeah. faxzero.com. You can email to a fax, to a fax for free. That's okay. great. That's amazing. Uh, let's give out that fax number one more time then. You can send in a free fucking email. 910-254-4350. 910-254-4350. Just fax in free Mason Burrow for us. Um, it's free at faxzero.com. I'll tell I you what, man. That. They're not a sponsor, but they are now. Fax Zero. Well, you're welcome, Fax Zero. Uh, that's a freezies because if that, that works, you do. come on, brother. Come on. Come on. Straight razors. Out. Promo code Revolution twenty percent off. I forgot to say it. I got a little, little sidetracked. I got a little. I got a little wood in my pants. To be real, is with you, Jamie. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know how long you're gonna get away with you right anymore. They're what? coming for everybody now. Oh, who? What? Who else? Did you see uh, Trudeau, the uh, Prime Minister of Canada? Uh huh. Is it? That, that's what you call those those people in Canada, right? Yes. They're Prime Ministers. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it should be president, I think. President sounds more mm-hmm. official. Prime minister kind of leaves the options open of like, do you, are you the most powerful guys or somebody else? Right. Because like the prime minister of England has a different job than, you know, like when I hear like the queen of England, I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I'd rather go to the queen. I don't want to go to you. To the prime minister. To the prime minister. I'd rather talk mm. to the queen. Again, not from these countries. Right. Don't live in these lands. It's not really, but yeah. And yeah, I wouldn't yeah. make decisions for them like Matthew Cropper is making for us because I don't live there. You right. Fuck. Um, Justin Trudeau, okay, uh, Prime Minister of Canada, uh, got popped for uh, blackface in two thousand one. They've got this picture circulating. Uh, it was in a yearbook, so I don't know what what took them all this long to find it. I, here, here's the but, thing. 
Uh, I'm gonna before you say anything. It, it, it was a costume party. He was going as Aladdin, so they're calling it brown face oh. because he was making himself uh, brown for this fucking thing. Okay. Um, again, he was at a party 20 years ago as Aladdin. You know, I, you used to be able to do shit like that. Right. It was just like, hey man, fuck off. Even 10 years ago. Well, my point with it is, and the other guy, the Virginia guy was in the yearbook as well. Correct. So it's that right there tells you that it wasn't that big of a deal back then if they put it in a yearbook. It's not like it was, do you know what I mean? Some weird, like somebody was taking a cell phone footage and nobody knew about it. The school put that picture in. The people that are running the yearbook committee put yeah. that picture yeah. in. The people like and there's like nine girls in the so photo with him that are taking pictures. Everyone and shit, so at like that point would have to be held responsible, accountable, and like, hey, well, you know, what are you gonna? You start look. They're gonna dig up everything on everyone. We talked about that that kid from SNL, that poor fucking bastard. Um, yeah, you know, but again, but we also said he's better off. It's fine. Yeah, but then you know this. It's like, hey man, you're, you're just gonna dig up everything on everyone. Through the end of time, and apparently no one has made mistakes in this world. So, um, you know, and even if you had, well, you can't correct them. Yeah. Um, I, when I saw this, I was like, motherfucker, man, they're just they're coming after everybody now. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm again, I'm looking at the the cost. It is the, it's Aladdin. He's at a costume party. Like, Jesus, man. Yeah. You know. And look, we're trying. We're doing we're trying to do better everybody's trying to do better i guess but like if you're offended at every single last goddamn thing it's like it's like the movie white chicks right there was no offense over that nobody gave a shit no white people gave a shit but my thing is if he was doing it at a party last week right or at a party last month or even last year it's like okay dude like you know better now yeah um so the for me, and that's with the Me Too, that's with everything, the retroactive uh, persecution, right? Yeah. Where it's just like, you can't, we can't really do that. Yet, there's people in, many people in prison for weed offenses. We're not like jumping to let them out, no. right? But I we are going to let, we are going to go back and make sure that the people that did blackface 20 years ago yeah. are persecuted, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm not really sure. He had to apologize and all that other shit. Uh, I don't know this fucking dude. I don't live in this country. Um, but uh, look, just if you're out in the world, they're going to find everything at this point. Yeah. So I'm sure you'll be crushed one day for you like it. Um, but I will go the way of, I mean, like Shane Gillis even. Yeah. Didn't really apologize. I'm not going to apologize for And shit. I wouldn't either. It would be like. I am happy, like he was saying, I am happy to have a conversation with anyone that I actually offended. Actually offended. Yeah. The person that really took offense to it, I would love to have a conversation with them. Yeah. But um, other people that are just trying to like take you down for weird shit. Piggyback like, off this shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey man, uh, I'm all done with that. I'm all done with that. I like, look, I've done some aggressive films said this before sure. and i'll say it again sure guarantee you in two three years tops they'll be pulling clips from those going oh my god i can't believe what you did no that's comedy motherfucker and that's what yeah. i did uh those movies are all available in every platform and have been for years so you can give up you can give up i don't care um i'm done with caring what i what, what i do care about though is you know me you've known me well uh, you know me for years now at this point, Jabes. I guess so. And you know that two things bother me. Two types of people who die really get to me. Do you want to guess what they are? Porn stars and supermodels? Correct. Porn stars and supermodels. Mm -hmm. August! August! Remember when August Ames died? August Ames. You Lost. guys check out that podcast yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last Go back in the archives. August. Uh, August. August. Um, doesn't deserve, didn't deserve no. it. No. Uh, why? Why? Uh, supermodels and porn stars. When they die, uh, now that, that I really care about. Uh, we, we got a, we had a big one pass last night. And, uh, oh man, this one hurts. 
This one hurts. Jessica James. You know? Jessica James. Super famous. Super fucking famous porn star. Oh, okay. Um, we got around a million Instagram followers, too, at this point. Um, yeah, pull her up. Jessica James. You'll know exactly who it is. Uh, they found her dead yesterday um, at her place in, uh, in Hollywood. Okay. The, the cause of death is unknown, um, but re- cops reportedly found various prescription drugs, and uh, she did have a history of seizures, so... Okay. Not sure if, if it was that, but uh, she was living in San Fernando Valley, which wasn't a shock. Sure, yeah. Obviously. Um, not a shock that she was living in the Valley. Big, big porn world, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what was her specialty, do you know? No, but she'd been on all the shows, you know, like Celebrity Rehab, and uh, oh, okay. like she made the run on VH1. Um, super fucking famous. And, you know, she's been doing... Uh, private gigs online now, which I think everybody's moved to that in the porn world yeah. to, for money. Um, but we're going to go through her entire history because you know we do this. When a porn star dies, mm-hmm. we go through their life and we give them the tribute that they deserve, Jesse. Okay. Um, at 26, she started doing soft porn. All right. And uh, Well, sure. Okay. She was born Jessica Redding mm. in Anchorage. Ah. Alaska. Really hot people come from Al- uh, Alaska. Alaska, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's something about the, it's f- the cold, like preserves. Mm-hmm. I mean, they all have just like great skin, gorgeous. Yeah. Guys and girls. It's the snow. You're always so cold, your face is tight. I don't know what it is. Your, they're your, just, your skin they're, is tighter. Yeah. Because you're cold. Cold all the time. It's just, yeah. Now, her well, first smash hit, mm-hmm. and this was, this was went global, um, was the 2005 porn uh, the porn identity. You remember that one? The porn identity. No. Correct. Correct. Um, it was a takeoff, Jabe's, on the born identity. I get that. And uh, she did the porn identity. I get that. With that, so um, that was a big one for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I think even Matt Damon wrote um, a review on it and just said, "I've never seen pornography this powerful, along with acting and action and love." I, I think he said love. There was some love in there. Um, she was named Honey of the Year by Hustler in the same year. Cool. It's a pretty, pretty esteemed award right yeah. there, right? Um, I don't know who's going to, I don't know where she, her estate is or who's going to get that award. She was on Weeds as herself, huh? Correct. Yeah, she was on she Weeds. She appeared as herself on several episodes of the Showtime series Weeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 200 adult films 200 i mean it was a lot like she's again super famous in the porn world uh tributes have flooded in from fellow members of the industry who remembered her as sweet and electric savory yeah um one of the the quotes in here that they got from somebody was uh jack on taylor who's been on drinking bros oh yeah um she said you were so kind and so generous i'll never forget you coming to take care of me after my rhinoplasty you always had a way of making job. Yep. yep. You always had a way of making people laugh. Sorry, I'm getting choked up. Yeah. And uh, your energy was electric. Yeah. Oh, that feels good to get out. Feels good to get out. So one of her was last it? Instagram posts, mm-hmm. it looks like, "Hey guys, took a little vacation for a couple of days. I love you all. Apologies. I hope everyone is having the best sex time of their life." Yeah. See that? Always, always thinking of others heart all the emoji, way. Heart emoji, heart emoji, heart emoji. Through the very end. Heart emoji. Okay, so there was, there was two more. two more after that one. Okay, do you want to say those? There was the total of. The heart emojis? Yep. You're counting that right now? There's t- nine. Oh, there's nine. Mm. Whew, that's a lot. That's a lot of heart emojis. Well, she just really, really, really hopes that you're having the best sex time of your life. Yeah. No. I'm hoping. Yeah, that's nice. Sex that's nice. time of your life. My <laughs> my thing, like Jacqueline Taylor is hilarious. Um, again, she was on Drinking Bros before. Was it necessary, Jacqueline, to put in? Thank you for getting me after my rhinoplasty, like my nose job. Like what? Why? You just could have said for taking care of me when I was sick. Or oh, that's funny. What if it's like? Well, I want to thank her <laughs> for taking care of me after I lost all that weight. <laughs> after I lost all that weight and got the boob job, and was look and and was tan. 
Oh, I want to thank you for picking me up after I lost all the weight, got a boob job, and was tan as shit. It's just so thank specific. Thank you for helping me. Isn't it? My, say, thank my you for taking care, care of me after my rhinoplasty. Oh, does it get any better than that? Not really. Do you know that I'm still on the boat? Hmm? I'm still on the boat. Are you still, you're, you're still rocking back and forth? I feel like there might be something wrong with me. Come on. You think so? You can get Dude, how, how, yeah, like how am I still like seriously moving like, like we're on a boat? So let me ask you this, because we have a flight tonight. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm just going to have to dram a mean back up again. Oof, James. That what am I going to do? Can intense. you guys please message me or something like what you have to do for it? So like some if, people, if something's triggered and I now have just vertigo, vertigo just straight up all vertigo. the fucking time, like I would die. Yeah. It's, uh, it's what do I do? One. Is there some kind of weird surgery, some inner ear fucking shit, some like, I don't really know. I just know. don't ever want to be sick like this. I yeah. That's great. It's, it's look. So is a boat out now, by the way? And it has to be. Is the what? Is a boat out, getting a boat out. That's ha that has to be out of the picture now. No, because when we go with our friends and stuff, I don't get sick at all. But th you have not gone when it's choppy like that. Yeah. So. I've been on, yeah, I've gone a lot more than you have actually. You've gone out like one time with our friends. With our friends, but I, in real life, like I've gone deep sea fishing numerous times. Yeah, like so you said, I'm sure you went like times. one time, like two times or something. Jesse, I'm fucking registered um, uh -huh. with states. For How many all boats of, did you of guys big charter? game fishing yeah. and all that stuff. No, I know I, you went like one time or something, which is fine. In, in all honesty, I've probably been like twenty or thirty times, right? Um, dead serious. Where? Uh, a lot in L.A. Um, I had some relatives that lived in L.A., mm -hmm. San Francisco, um, and then New Jersey. We went a lot because I spent most of my summers there. Yeah, so like it's fine when we just go to like Mesa Burrow Island and yeah. back. Like I don't get sick at all. And I even went uh, in Oai one time, um, and that was nice. Cool. That yeah, was a fun time. So that's awesome. Yeah. So um. So I've been a lot, Japes. Been yeah. a lot. No, that's cool. But I think if you were on it, you know, on a regular basis, like, uh, I don't know, I don't know, because maybe you got triggered. Maybe it was something within you that is now out in the world and you can't stop it no i think it's an inner ear thing but yeah you think so yeah that's how it works yeah does it yeah so i'm not a urologist I'll talk to someone yeah i'll talk to someone else that kind of like knows about it yep. and then we'll see what's going on yeah you circle back with me uh let me know yeah i'll definitely talk to that. anyone else that understands understands it oh the world yeah yeah of course of course <laughs> yeah uh, I think I got everything under control on this one. Um, again. So, yeah. Uh, I'm no urologist. Worried. Worried. worried uh, uh, next sure. up, Jabes. Uh, fucking, they keep saying this Warren Rising, man. The what? Warren Rising. Uh, Elizabeth Warren. Oh, Warren Rising. Yeah. Um, it's one of the top stories today, dude. Uh, now they're, they're asking the question um, in every news outlet today, is it her nomination to lose um, because looking at her crowds and the momentum versus everyone else on that side of the the boat, uh, democratic wise, mm -hmm. is it hers to lose? That would be insane to me. I yeah, didn't see Biden no going down. To be honest with you, I just you, what, I, you I, didn't. Uh uh, I didn't see that happening. Yeah, and I don't know. Again, look with, with the press, you never know what, if this shit is real or not, or if they're pushing their own people or why. Um, but with Biden, man, I just thought he was kind of Teflon, but he keeps, he keeps kind of stumbling in all this shit. And uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, I, I would have put money on Biden. And on our sports show, we're, uh, we're at mybookie.com and promo code Drinking Bros, if you want to use that to double your deposits. We did bet on the election. So we've already bet on the 2020 election, my co host and I, right? Mm -hmm. But. On the Democratic side, the odds were so shitty for everyone else besides Biden that it was like, eh, can we throw some money on this or not? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually really surprised by this. D do you believe that she could beat Trump? Warren, no. I don't either, right? No. Um, I would think it was Bernie and, Bernie and Trump. Mm. I, I don't see Warren getting past Bernie. Maybe, but they're, they're so similar. It depends. Like, did he lose all of that momentum 
in the last election because he look. I don't think they're as similar as as yeah. Their their views are very similar. Very similar as candidates. But he yeah. He's got he's a little bit more grounded in some of his executions. And and she's not is what you're saying? No, she's a little bit like just you know what I mean? Like I will fight for you. I will, like yeah. things that will never ever work whereas and again, maybe it's only cuz he was on Rogan and I got to actually hear his exact implementation without screaming. Without screaming and without being cut off and without having to like rile the crowd up, it mm-hmm. really just was a conversation of how he would go about doing all of these crazy things that sound crazy when they're being yelled at you. Sure. So maybe if she went on, I would have a different view, but it, uh, I don't know how she's going to uh, execute any of these crazy things that she wants to do. So I would think at this point with Rogan and shit, like that Bernie would be a uh, front runner. I don't know. Um, I, I, so the polls are putting her what? They're putting her ahead. So like uh, the new polls from uh, <clears throat> NBC News and Wall Street Journal. Um, but as we know, those I, are I know. not right. I so know. it's like, did you learn anything, you guys? I'm not sure. From 2006, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure. Did you learn anything? You don't put out these, these weird percentages that make people go, oh, okay, we're good. So we're good, I, I, and then they don't I, I go don't out and vote. I don't know. I, if you would have asked me this, not one prayer. What's the I thought it would have been Bernie against Biden, William, and that's it. Sin. Uh, Matt Williamson, she didn't get to go do the debate. No, Fuck. She, yeah, she she's out. It. We were on the we were on the on the cruise. I so we know, didn't get so to, didn't see get to see it. it. Um, so we were performing for the people and doing live doing shows, doing live shows, and, and um, getting vertigo for life. We missed we missed the uh, debate, but man, uh, I would have loved to have seen Marianne Williamson in that fucking thing. That would have been. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Now, but she didn't realize how mean the left was. <laughs> so maybe she's just done. Because at that point, if you're talking shit about the left like that, yeah. you're done, right? Oh, yeah. Because that's done. your main. I did not realize <laughs> how mean it's crazy, she said on this, on this show. I forget what it was. Or she was speaking at something, right? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. crazy. She's just like head in her hand. Every time. They're so mean. Every time we get breaking news here. You know, it's not what you want to hear, but the people need to hear it, Japes. Delta, a flight from Atlanta, just plunged nearly 30,000 feet on its way to Fort Lauderdale, and it had to uh, make an emergency landing in Tampa. Whew, that is a got it. That's a big drop. <laughs> that is a Sorry real that. big drop, James. The, I'm just like the, picturing that. The no, pilots, yelling, that's why. The pilots deployed oxygen mask for the passengers and uh, Oh my god, that's it. Heart attack. And then made the controlled descent. Heart attack Holy and I'm dead. Shit. That is fucking crazy. 30,000 feet. What happened? Did they say Oof. what happened? Um, it was like some pressurization issue. My God, man. That is crazy. When are we getting on the flight? Two hours? That's, That's what? what? That's yeah, it's, cru- it's usually cruising altitude, right? That's what our so what producer they- Jamie was chiming in. Usually it's, hey. No, they dropped 30,000. Yeah, they dropped, but that, that's usually like, hey, man, you're fucking dead. Yeah. So, man, that's close. Um, but, you know, people are like, dude, life is fragile like that, uh, like getting onto this. So the, the total of it, by the way, th- this is according to the passengers that are getting off right now. They're saying it was a, a scary 60 to 90 seconds. We didn't know what was going on. And um, ooh, could you imagine a 90, se- 90 seconds is a long time. So 60, if you really break it down. Oh, my God. To, n- to drop like that? No. No. Man, that is not. I would be dead. Dude. I think I would be dead. I well, think you would have a heart attack. No, we will flate in five hours. So, I'm sure, we'll be fine, James. You know, you would talk about vertigo. You'd have. I'd be. You might I'd lose have an eye. a heart attack and die. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? And you'd probably lose an eye too. Is that what happens? I think an eyeball pops out of your skull. 
When yeah, you, yeah, with the pressure drop. With the pressure drop, and then mm-hmm. with the other stuff that you have, I think uh, you're, sure. you're probably your right eye will just shoot out sure. in, into the back seat of the thing. I've got a podcast for you. You do? Uh, and a podcast corner. Let's do podcast corner. Let's do it. What's that? So it's called Long May They Run, which is a fucking great name for a podcast, right? A music doc podcast. No. So they're going to go, Long May They Run? That's really hard. Long May They Run? Yeah, like... Long may you run. Yeah, but why don't why why isn't it long may you run? Because they're going into different bands, so they're going to do each season is going into a different mm. band and doing their whole like okay. documentary. The first one is fish. Is it really? Yeah, that's funny. Origins. That's a good. The one. whole deal. Um, long may they run is a fucking great name for a podcast. Great name. Uh, they could they could have done better, but. Uh, Long may they run. Good luck remembering that one. That's, it just sounds like a bunch of adjectives put together. Where you're just like, oh, long may they run. It's a song, dude. Long may they run. It's a song and they, that everyone knows. It's verbs and adjectives. No, it's long may you run. So, yeah. Japes. Hey, look, they could have done, done a little better with that. But I'm down for that. You know I love rock docs. And you know I love all of that shit on musicians. Fish has got a crazy story. James, a really crazy story. Not only they're following, I'm just like, yeah. But I think it was the drummer, and I'm gonna have to look this up real quick. I think the, like the drummer, somebody got popped for like child porn, like something weird like that, where it was just like, huh? Mm. Fish? Mm-hmm. Um, who, who else is after that? Is say who the upcoming yeah, seasons the are? First season. It is. Mm-hmm. So did they say, hey, did they cock tease it out for the, the next one? No. All right. So just it could be just fish then. Is it doing well in the ratings? Yeah. What number is it? Um, I think overall it was like at twelve or thirteen. No shit. Yeah. Overall, or is it overall like overall charts? Yeah. God damn it, man! I gotta, I, I man, I gotta start keeping up with this. I gotta start keeping up with other shows. You're good at it. You're great at it. You listen mm-hmm. to everything that comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll look at the charts because I'm looking at ratings every day. But we do seven a week. And then I, I usually have to edit it and put it up and all that shit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and write the description. So I don't get a, a chance to listen like you do. Uh, but I did see the number one the other day was The Office Girls. Did you listen to that one? I didn't listen to it. Oh, you didn't? Mm-mm. It's uh, Pam and Angela? Yeah. It's the two of them. So mm-hmm. they're hosting a show, yeah, mm-hmm. about The Office. And it's number one. It wasn't, here's the weird thing to me. It wasn't surprising to see that they were number one. People no. love The Office more than life itself. Yeah, but, well, I would say how could that sustain, but Ron Burgundy has been up there. So usually what happens if you watch the charts is like a YouTube star will start one Mm -hmm. and be like number one because they have millions of followers on YouTube, right? But they cannot sustain it because they're not podcasts, like they're just not good at doing podcasts, right? Mm. So they will slowly fall and then be off the charts. Gotcha. So Ron Burgundy has held where I was just like, that's a fluke because it is who it is. Mm-hmm. Conan has dropped, uh, you know, like there's these other YouTube stars, Zane, whatever is up there right now, but that won't last because he's not there. They just aren't that format. So here's the difference is like YouTube stars mm-hmm. are like, hey, guys, what's up? I'm so excited. Everything's awesome and nothing's bad. Right. And podcasts, you have to be like. I have vertigo. I'm dying. How I, about you? We hate the school board. Yeah, we exactly. hate the school board. This is what's going on in our life. This is a real conversation between two people that isn't like faked and hyped up and like, K okay, guys. So it just doesn't translate. Got it. But they can get on the chart because they fucking have a bunch of followers yeah, they and they're followers, like, yeah. what? Like, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is it hard to do a podcast? I mean, I'm already number one. Yeah. It's like, yeah, stay there. Stay there. Yeah. Try it, and stay tough. there. And do it for years. Um, by the way, I want to I wanna back, backtrack to that fish. It was the bassist um, who was charged with... Uh, well, I'm sure they'll go into that. I, you, you, listen to the story. This is why I remember it, because it was fucking crazy. So I was like, man, was it child porn? It had something to do with a, like a child, a really young child. And I was like, what the fuck? Um, he was, it was uh, the bassist, Mike Gordon, um, was, was on charges of child endangerment. He was found alone in a boathouse with a nine-year-old girl. And... Um, this gets weirder. You ready? Maybe. 
Gordon allegedly met the girl and her father backstage at a Grateful Dead show in Jones Beach, New York. Her father is the leader of the Hell's Angels chapter. One would think he would be dead. Right. So I don't know what the outcome of that was, but they'll, I'm sure they'll go through it. Um, you know? Yeah, I hope. Because uh, oh, fish, man, shit. I, look, I've seen them, I don't know, probably 15, 20 times. I don't listen to them in cars. I think mm-hmm. I've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I'm not a like I'm not going to jam out to fish in the car, but I'll definitely go to a show because it's mm-hmm. a blast. Just the whole experience of it. Um, but uh, yeah, they got these those little cheeseburgers they throw out in the crowd, and I mean the whole fucking shit. These little blow up cheeseburgers, like you could really go into a weird history of why they did it. Because I th- I always figured with them. And I'm probably listen, I should listen to the goddamn show at this point on the plan. Um, but I, I always figured with them that the Grateful Dead passed away. They had just started and they felt like they had to pass that to keep the torch going. Yeah. And I felt like that's what it was. Um, but when I'm there at the show, I do enjoy the music where you're like, yeah. oh, all right, cool. Um, I was I was surprised to learn that you didn't know about G11 special sauce the other day because they're in town. Yeah. yeah. And all of our friends are going and I don't know who he is it could uh, so here's the other thing it also could be a regional thing okay i felt like I, 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 i'm gonna retract a statement I, I i said to you in the car earlier i was like it might be an age gap um because i'm a couple summers older than you um like just a couple summers five years yeah two um probably um again no no good at math but uh five years older. two probably probably two um I think it might not be the age thing. I was thinking back on it. I was like, man, they were huge in the Midwest, huge in the South. It might not, he might not have gone to the West Coast all the way around. So, I mean, like, because you were in LA, you were probably listening to like Primus. Yeah. (laughs) Were you really? No. Oh, at what time? Uh, Portishead, Fiona Apple. Is that around that time? Yeah. I look, I I like Fiona Apple too, but I guess I ventured out more. Like I try to listen to everything musically because I, yeah. I just enjoy Beastie music. Boys. Um, I just enjoy music. Eh, BC Boys is everywhere, but uh, with them, I don't. Maybe not because there wasn't that gigantic hit. And the one that was a gigantic hit to me was probably not to you guys out there. I feel like yeah. California was always different in music, where it was just like, yeah. "Hey, man, this is a different vibe out here." Uh, even Atlanta with like Outkast and uh, you know Black Crows and Fish and those guys, like. It was, it was a period of time where everybody was at Athens, University of Georgia, and they were all playing there. Like REM came out of there, and Widespread Panic, and all these guys, and they were like, "Yeah, this is a fucking scene." Mm-hmm. And then you, we knew those bands, but other people didn't know those bands. And, and Joan all Osborne, shit. Lisa Loeb. Nope. <laughs> no. What if God was one of us? Is that yeah. Joan Osborne? Yeah. Does she have more than one song? Yeah, dude. Come on. We've been over this. We've Lisa already Loeb? been over this. Lisa Loeb, you know she follows me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. What up, Lisa Loeb? Still what got it, girl. Up, girl? Um, she did the uh, reality bites. Remember? We, yes. We, we, I think we gave her the, the thing. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so I, it might have been, now that I think about it with G11 Special Sauce, it might just be where you're from. Yeah. And it might not have anything to do with widespread with either. I had no idea who that was. I can I can see that. I can see that for sure. Like everyone, and that was like when we first sort of moved out here, and everyone, all of your friends, yep, were going crazy for it. And I, I was like, look, I'd still love to go to a widespread show. Yeah, um, I, I did enjoyed, not get I, it. Yeah, I've seen them a thousand times. I love them. They're great. Are they like OAR? Like yes, college bands. So OAR was from Ohio. They used to play at our fraternity. Yeah. And uh, I've seen those guys, you know, obviously in my house. Um, right. And they're rad too, but you're right. Like OAR is a, is a band that I don't feel ever got to the West Coast and blew up, right? Mm-hmm. It just, we're Midwestern. And like, if, if some songs came on, like Crazy Game of Poker, you'd probably know that, but you mm, might not. Maybe. No, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. It's regional shit. And I remember when I first moved out to LA, uh, you know, we got the whole shit, the rental car with the drop top and it was a Sebring, mm-hmm. you know, we got the convertible rental okay. car while we were looking for places and all that stuff. Oh, okay. Blasting, uh, was it 105.9? Yeah. Power 106. And you were just like the rap 
that was coming out of there was just like, oh, shit. All right, cool, man. Um, I did not know this, a lot of these groups existed. And right. I was like, shit, all right. Uh, and then, because I, I was in New York earlier. Mm-hmm. I, it was at uh, NYU. And they had their own set of fucking people. And I was like, all right, sweet. Yeah. But the big bands, I guess, are, look, they're known everywhere. So like Beastie Boys, I feel like they're yeah. always been mega famous yes. and, and stuff like that. Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Nope. Well, <laughs> uh, they were, weren't there they? There was a period of time when them, yeah. like right after Swingers came out, and it was them and uh, Squirrel Nut Zippers. Remember the Squirrel Nut Zippers? Oh my gosh, the Squirrel Nut Zippers. I definitely had yeah. Yeah. that CD. Squirrel Nut Zippers uh, <laughs> CD. <laughs> But yeah, there cringe. was a, I cringe. Right after Swingers came out, everybody yes, was doing that that's shit. That's right. That's right. That's right. Even in because I was yeah, I was in Ohio. Even in Ohio, like there was like swing nights and all that mm-hmm. stuff after that movie came out. I was like, man, I can't believe all of this happened from oh, an yes. independent film. Oh yes. And it did. Oh yeah. It did. Uh, still one of the greatest movies of all time, by the way. Oh yeah. It holds up. Everything about it holds up. The only thing that is probably different is the quality of movies and things that they're making now. So we had a guy here last night that was in town and uh, he's not in the entertainment industry. We we had a separate meeting about the media company or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd seen a movie that that I had wrote and directed. And he goes, let me ask you something. What did you think of the new, and this, this is no lie. He goes, what did you think of the new Aladdin? And I was like, I would never see that. Um, Right. And I have children, and I would never see that because the old Aladdin was perfectly fine. Right. And uh, he goes, oh, shit, really? So, like, you guys don't go and see these things? And I was like, no, man, I live there, and they're just remaking everything at this point and just rebooting all of it. So I was like, I don't, I'm not really going to jump, you know, jaunt on out to the theaters. Right. Take a jaunt out to the theaters to go see Aladdin with Will Smith, you know, um, but he was he was pretty surprised by that. And I then the other part of me, like when he went to take a piss, I was like, shit. I mean, this, that movie did make over a billion dollars. Right. So there there is definitely people going to see this a lot in America. And maybe I'm just not going to cave into the the whole remake aspect of yeah, it. No, like, no what do not, they do? You're not doing it. I'm not going to do it, right? Mm-mm. I'm not I'm not done with that. Um, and that'll bring me to my revolutionary figure of the day. And this is a total accidental segue that is awesome and it just happened to work out like that, Jabes. Okay. You do 900 shows, sometimes it just works out like blam-o, that. Blamo, blamo. Carrie Elwes is my revolutionary figure of the day. Um, he is Princess Bride guy? Correct. Yes. Um, I'm going to pull up his quote here um that exploded on twitter so they're trying to fucking remake princess bride oh god yeah and i mean it let me find it It, like it sent people into a rage actually this was the only movie by the way that everybody raged against where it was just like no yeah no 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 um and i thought his statement was perfect I mean, just absolutely perfect, short and sweet. And he just said, uh, because Variety was the one who, and if you don't know Variety, it's them in Hollywood Reporter. They kind of break all the news stories in Deadline.com for films. Uh, So it said Variety, Sony Pictures Entertainment CEO said, uh, there's a very famous people whose names I won't use who want to redo The Princess Bride. And I think that's going to be a thing, right? And outrage happened online. uh, And Carrie Elwes wrote, there's a, there, there's a shortage of perfect movies in this world. It would be a pity to damage this one. And that was exactly. it. Exactly. And I was like, fucking A, well said. he's kind of an asshole, but. In real life, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is a very egotistical thing to say, but someone had to say it, right? You know. Like, I wish it was someone else. It, it is, though, but it is a, but per- it is. It is a perfect movie. It is a perfect movie. It is. It, and it is impossible to make a perfect movie. And this movie, to me, still. I mean, it was on. I would be just as pissed. It was on a couple months ago. We watched it with our kid. I I would be just as pissed if they were trying to remake Swingers, right? uh, Or like other movies that to me are perfect. Yeah. Just the way they are. Yeah, man. I I just. uh, 
uh, Swingers is, is probably that movie for me. Don't touch that. Don't ever, Mm-mm. ever touch that. Um, and then, yeah, Princess Bride. But look, there's a, there's a bunch of them, but uh, those two are the ones that come to mind in the immediate sense, you know. Obviously, they're not going to remake like Shawshank Redemption or anything. They can't remake Princess Bride, though. I, I hope not, man. I who's really, gonna be really the hope giant? Not. Like, who's gonna like? You know, they would get somebody from uh, like the Undertaker from uh, WWE. Dead serious. He, the, he fits the bill. Kali. Yeah, Kali. So I, they would, they would look. They would find a way, James. I, I can promise yeah. you that. They would definitely find a way. Yeah. Uh, and the, but the weird thing is, is like Robin Wright Penn. Or she, I don't know mm-hmm. if she, she kept it after the nope. divorce. She got just Robin Wright. Yes, got rid of Penn for sure. <laughs> Still doing shit. <laughs> he dropped all that. the time. Um, great. Yeah, shit. Uh, Carrie was just in Stranger Things, right? Yeah, Carrie Ellis was just in Stranger Things. Like um, the inconceivable guy. He's got to look the exact same. I try to hire him for a movie. He does. He was uh, on. Um, uh, he was on Gossip Girl. Oh, and fucking. He lives in New York. Inigo Montoya. Yeah. Indigo, whatever. Yeah. He he could clean it up. Oh yeah. All, I, look, they all could if you want, but why? Why do that? It's dumb. Well, they wouldn't. They'd make it with other people, and then they would be like the d- the dads. Yeah. Either way, Billy don't. Crystal, you put him in there. Just don't put the old makeup on. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> he was old makeup, right? Yep, he was. Just let it go. Yeah. He could just be save on makeup for that. Oh, that's great. That's great. What yeah. else? Um, but no, I look. Humperdink. Humperdink, yeah. <laughs> You're a gigantic fan of Princess Bride. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I know. Um, as, as you should. Yeah. Um, it's great, mem- great. Yeah, don't touch it. Just would just do what Carrie always said. Ugh. Let's just leave that one alone. Um, and maybe we could just start like a like a box, you know, where we just put all of the old prints of films they should never remake yeah. alone, and just be like, hey, man. Yeah. So we've all voted as a, as a nation, mm-hmm. and these are the ones we don't want you to touch. Right, Clifford, Martin Short. Nope, nope. Goes back. Nope. To school. No. Is it? Okay. Absolutely not. Uh, not no. Definitely not that. So. Clifford, uh, Princess, Princess Bride, uh, Father of the Bride. Yeah, it was Steve Martin. Steve Martin and Martin Short. Don't. Uh, Let's leave that one alone, we right? Will. We will. Ooh, I like Father of the Bride. It's a great movie. It is. It's a great movie. Maza and Dada are pregnant to Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave the people with that, James. You're going out on a high note. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. the Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is a revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.